You didn't come here for shoots and ladders. You didn't come here for playing in the kiddie pool or the sandbox. You came here for an experience that meets you at the level of your abilities as a creator. Things are falling apart because the old ways are not energetically supported anymore. Challenges and difficulties serve you by showing you where your power lies. Regardless of what you believe about yourself, the truth is that you are powerful. Problems exist to lead us to a solution. A really hard workout shows you two things. It shows you where you are currently strong and where you still have an opportunity to increase your strength. Hi everybody, my name is Amar and I am here to help you find the clarity in the chaos and the message in the mess. This is your mid-month July update for 2024 and I am entitling this one either one of two things, how to get unstuck or how to reach the next level. Or maybe the title is going to be how to get unstuck and reach the next level. Regardless of what I call this, this video update, one thing is clear things are intense right now. Let's just acknowledge that, that to look out onto the world stage, the external reality, things are unlike anything we've ever experienced before. So there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is that no matter what's going on in the world outside around you, if you know where your center is, you know where your power is. And when you know where your power is, you can navigate any set of circumstances with a perspective and a context and a level of understanding that allows you to see yourself as the empowered sovereign creator that you are. The bad news is, is that things are not going to go back to the way they were. Things are only going to continue to get intense from now until I would say the spring of next year in 2025. I've been talking about this for a long time. Last year's peak of intensity is this year's normal. Think about climbing a mountain. When you stand at the foot of the mountain and you're looking all the way up at the top, it seems impossible. You don't have any idea how you're going to get there. And at some point you begin the climb and then you realize inevitably, oh, wow, I've made progress. I'm halfway up the mountain. And then the halfway point of the mountain becomes your new starting point. Looking around at the chaos on the planet, it is really, really clear right now to see that collectively we are rising up and saying no. The old ways aren't supported energetically anymore, and that's why they're falling apart. The same is true in your personal experience. The reason that you feel stuck or that you feel blocked is because you're still trying to do things in a way that your soul no longer supports. Yeah, things might be hard, but here's the truth. Things are hard because you chose them to be hard. Things are hard because you wanted them to be hard. That's why you came. You didn't come here for shoots and ladders. You didn't come here for playing in the kiddie pool or the sandbox. You came here for an experience that meets you at the level of your abilities as a creator. And that's why your soul chose to come experience things at this moment. That's why you are currently in a body on the planet at this time. If you didn't want a challenge, you wouldn't be here. So let's talk about this idea of being stuck or being stalled. I know so many people right now are experiencing this, experiencing this, and I'm seeing this all the time in my client work, in my own life. I'm seeing this in the collective experience as we're looking out onto the world and trying to figure out how to do it, how to move beyond, how to do it in a way that is inclusive, how to do it in a way that honors life, how to do it in a way that is not using our power as a blunt force object just to beat those into submission that perhaps perhaps we don't agree with or don't approve of. It's the same thing in your own life. The reason that you're stuck or at a dead end is for one of two reasons. Either you don't have a vision or you don't have a plan. And I'm going to tell you what the difference is and how you can figure out which one you need. If you're stuck in a dead end and you don't know what to do, it's the same old thing, same shit, different day. It's because you need a new vision. If you're feeling like, God, there just has to be more. There has to be something else. This can't be the way that it, ha you know, it has to be. This can't be all that there is. Those are always a sign that you need a new vision. 
And what is a vision? The vision is the dream. The vision is the desire. The vision is when you close your eyes and you tap into those deep parts of yourself and you ask yourself, what is it that I really want? The vision is your feminine principle. Everything is feminine first. It's always about the why first. And that's what the vision is. It is your why. Why do you want something? Because I want to feel free. Because I want to feel powerful. Because I want to feel accomplished. Because I want to feel safe. Because I want to feel connected. Because I want to feel stable. Whatever it is, the only reason a human has ever chosen anything is because of what we think the payoff will be energetically, emotionally, or experientially. That's that's what the feminine does. She gives you the why. She gives you the thing that keeps you moving forward, that keeps you getting out of bed in the morning, even when things are hard. She's the thing that keeps you creating content, even when only two people have, have watched it or nobody has watched it. That's the why. That's the feminine principle. She is your dreamer. She is your visionary. She is the part of you that desires something else, that desires something more. And desiring something more doesn't mean that you're ungrateful. You could have the most amazing meal of your life today and you're still going to be hungry tomorrow. The reason that desires change and the reason that visions need to be amended or altered or discarded altogether is because we live in a creative reality. Creation is creative by nature. It is the nature of creation to create. Creation is always moving out, always expanding, always exploring into new territory, into new ideas, into new possibilities and potentials and models. And that's what the feminine is. She wants a vibe. She wants a flavor. She wants a frequency. And when you have your vision, you understand your why. So that's how you know if you need a new vision. If what you're doing just doesn't satisfy you anymore, if what you're doing just doesn't feed you, it doesn't speak to you in your gut, in your bones, in your soul, it's because it's time for a new vision. Now, if you have an idea of you want, of what you want, if you have the vision, if you have literally seen what it is that you want, but you don't know how to get it, you don't know how to build it, you don't know how to create it, then you need a plan. If you're feeling stuck because you don't know how to get what you want, you don't know how to build what you want, you don't know how to put it into action and take it from an internal idea or vision into something real that exists in real time, then you need a plan. And your plan comes from your masculine principle. Your masculine is your doer. He's the one with the hammer who's looking for a nail. He is the one that is ready to build something, to go create something. He's the one that takes the vision and puts down the shopping list and the to-do list of all the things that he needs to do in service of the feminine vision, in service of the why. So your plan, your masculine principle is essentially your how. So the feminine says, I want a life that feels like this. I want an experience that feels like this, that has this vibe, this flavor, this frequency, this, this emotion. And then the masculine steps up and says, okay, then let's go build it. So what do we need to do? We need to research. We need to acquire information. We need to gather the resources. We need to figure out a plan. If you're going to build a house, you have to have a blueprint. So the feminine gives you your why. She gives you the vibe. She gives you the feeling. She gives you the flavor. The masculine gives you the how. He gives you the plan. He gives you the practicality. He gives you the list of things that you need to get it done. Here's a couple of things to really begin to understand the masculine and the feminine in a different way. First of all, feminine does not mean female and masculine does not mean male. We all have the feminine and the masculine principle within each of us. There is the part of us that is receptive. There's the part of us that has the dream, has the vision, has the wish. And then there is the part of us that is assertive. The part of us that has the idea, the plan. Okay, <clears throat> this is how I'm going to go out and do it. This is how I'm going to go out and make it real. And here's the truth. We live in a physical reality. And a physical reality requires a physical action. It requires a physical choice. It requires you at some point to get up off the sofa, to get your butt outside, and to go do it. Here is what I see all of the time. People who are really, really deeply in touch with their feminine energy, their feminine principle, are really, really clear on the vision. They're really, really clear on the why. I want to feel this. I want to feel that. I want to see this experience. I want to see this thing. But the feminine without the masculine is just a pool of water and ideas and desires that never goes anywhere. Think of it like a river. A river without the river bed is just a pool of water that just kind of goes in all sorts of directions with no intention and 
and nothing really clear. That's the feminine self. She is that water. She is the flow. She is the idea. But she needs the masculine direction. She needs the masculine construct and structure to give her something to flow through, to give her a track, to give her a path from A to B to C. The masculine is the is the plan. The masculine is I'm going to go do it. The masculine is the action. And the masculine without the feminine is just action for the sake of action. The masculine without the feminine often becomes frustrated because he wants to do something, but he doesn't know why he's doing it. He doesn't know what he is serving. He doesn't know what he is providing for. He doesn't know what he is creating healthy boundaries to protect or to keep safe or to keep clear. So the masculine without the feminine often devolves into aggression, often devolves into violence, often devolves into just frustration. And I just got to fucking do something. So I'm going to go out there and destroy it just to get rid of this energy, just to move it. So the masculine without the feminine is a plan with no why. He doesn't know why he's out there swinging a hammer. He doesn't know why he's out there searching for something. So that's why we have to have both. That's why the feminine why and the masculine how are crucial. The feminine is the magical thinking. She is the dreamer. The masculine is the action. He is the doer. So the feminine is your magical thinking and the masculine is your inspired action. And when the two meet with a common vision, with the shared intention, that is where the magic happens. That is the secret sauce. And that's what gets things moving forward and creating and happening in real time in physicality. There's another thing to get really, really clear on when we're talking about the vision versus the plan or the plan versus the vision. If you have a plan but no vision, you're most likely just ripping off somebody else's idea or you're creating something, regurgitating something that already exists. The plan without the vision is just cookie cutter. It's the suburban neighborhood where every single house is exactly the same. It's the, you know, looking out on the landscape of social media where everybody starts to look the same, but there's no soul there. There's nothing inside them that is real, that is authentic, that is true. It's a beautiful structure that is empty. So if you have a plan without a vision, you're just creating creating something that looks good but has no depth. You are creating something that's already been created and you're just putting your own stamp on it. The vision without the plan is just you spinning in circles. It's just you chasing your tail with no objective idea of what you need to make it real. Think of it this way. If you think of things from like a marketing perspective, and let's just use water companies as an example. How many brands of water are there out there? At least 1,500, at least 10,000. I don't even know. Probably too many for me to count without doing some very serious research. But the point here is that a water company isn't selling you anything that doesn't already exist. A water company isn't selling you something that another company hasn't already packaged. The difference is the vision. The the vision for their brand, the vision for their vibe, the vision for their flavor, the vision for why you should give them your five bucks for a bottle of water versus another company giving them five bucks for a bottle of water. The reason that one water brand is successful and another isn't is because they have a very clear vision of the reality that they are creating. They have a very clear vision of the vibe of the flavor that you, they are selling you. Once you have the vision, the plan is really easy. That's the thing. The figuring out how to do it is actually really, really easy. It's just facts and figures. It's objective numbers. It's two and two equals four. A marketing plan is really, really simple once you understand what it is that you are marketing. And any market person will tell you this, you're not selling a product, you're selling a dream, you're selling a vision, you're selling somebody an idea of how cool they are or how different they are or how unique they are because they are buying your brand and they're carrying it around in their hand. That's why influencers can make so much money because they're not selling you a product, they're selling you an idea that, ooh, if you buy this thing, then you're gonna be cool, then you're gonna be in the cool kids club, then you're gonna be in this special elite group of individuals. So the vision is is what tells you the frequency, the energy, the experience that you're creating or selling, and then the plan is just figuring out how to do that. Here's another thing to understand. The vision is not a plan. The vision is not a plan any more than a menu is the meal. 
The vision tells you what you're going to experience. The vision tells you how it's going to feel. The vision tells you the vibe and the frequency and the experience that you're going to have when you enter through the gates of the amusement park. That's what the vision is. And the plan is not a vision. Again, the plan without a why is just an empty, beautiful shell, but then you show up and there's nothing there. There's nothing, the lights are on, but nobody's home. You open the box and it's empty and you say, well, thanks for the really pretty package and all the fancy $20 words. That was a really nice, bright and shiny presentation that you sold me, but there's no payoff. There's nothing there. So I understand that for many people, it can be really, really hard to figure out, well, what do I do? What do I do, Amar? How do I move forward? How do I get unstuck? And yes, part of it is having a vision and maybe you need a new vision entirely. That's, I think, something that a lot of us are waking up to is especially when we're looking out on the world and going, wait a minute, whose insane idea was it to have a world that is so divided? Whose insane idea was it to believe that one side is right and the other side is wrong because I'll tell you what, everybody is the hero of their own story and everybody is only ever doing one thing. They're doing the thing that they feel like is their only choice. They're doing the thing that they feel like is the best option. They're doing the thing that in the moment made the most sense and was the clearest. And the actions that anybody has ever taken or ever will take or is taking right now is only because of what they think that action will bring them. I vote for this person because I think that they will make a world that is better in my eyes, according to my agenda and my beliefs. I vote for that person person because I believe that they will create a world that is utopian and ideal in my eyes, in my vision, according to my belief system. But what we see is that ultimately it's just a matter of perspective. So what's really, really important to understand is the choice that is the right choice is the one that brings you to action. Sometimes the action that is appropriate is the action that goes inside because in order to have a vision, you need to get crystal clear on what it is that you want to feel to experience from an energetic feeling, emotion, or experiential perspective. And in order to have the plan, you need to get crystal clear on where your weaknesses are, where your deficits are. You need to get crystal clear on what you don't know. I've been talking about my current journey of building this Living Temple project, which is a dream that I have had for like 10 plus years now. And I'm finally getting around to writing the business plan, to drafting the pitch deck, to putting everything together, the financial projections, so that I can begin to present myself and my dream to investors to acquire the resources to get the land and build it in real time. When I began this project, I had the vision. The vision was freaking crystal clear. I have never had a problem with the vision. I am a visionary. What I didn't have up until recently was the actual practical factual tools that showed me how to build it. I had never done a financial projection before. I had never done a balance sheet. So for me to walk into a room full of people asking them for money with no clear financial plan of what is actually going to be required to make this a reality in a physical, practical, real world sense, they all would have looked at me like, well, that's a great idea, but why the hell should I give you money when you have no idea what the financial reality looks like? So in order for me to make this vision real, I have had to learn how to create spreadsheets. I have had to learn how to create balance sheets. I have had to learn what a financial projection, what a cash flow projection actually looks like and how to put it on a piece of paper in physical reality and say, here, this is what the dream looks like from a financial numbers perspective. So whatever it is that you need to do, understand that the right choice is what inspires you, moves you, or activates you into action. And sometimes that action is going to be asking you to go within and get in touch with your feminine principle. Sometimes that action is going to be telling you it's time to get real and time to get practical and time to actually physically do it and figure out how you need to do it and what is required for you to do it. And so regardless of what you need, whether the vision or the plan, the right choice is the one that gets you off your butt and gets you taking action. There's another 
piece here. And this is really for those of you who feel like you don't have the skills or the tools or the capability to create a plan and to go out and do it. I know, no matter what, I know that there is some part of your life that you are successful at. And what I mean by successful at is there is a part of your life where you can do whatever it is with no problem, right? Oh, I just know how to do this. This is something I'm really good at. I've always loved to do it as a kid, or I went to school and learned how to do it, or I've just always had a knack or an innate understanding of how to do these things. So the truth is, is that you already have a set of skills and tools and abilities that have brought you to success in the past. Here is the key. It is the same set of skills and tools and abilities that are going to bring you to success this time. It's just that you are applying them in a different context. You are applying them with a different why. The hammer that you've used to build the thing in the past is the same hammer. You're just now using that hammer in service of a new vision, in service of a different vision. So just because you don't know how to do it doesn't mean you can't. So remind yourself of where you have already been successful successful, where something is already effortless and where something is already easy or where something is already joyful and remind yourself, okay, I already know how to be easy. I already know how to be successful. I already know how to be joyful in my work. <clears throat> and I'm just going to apply that now to this new thing, this new project or this new vision. There's one more thing. And I think that this is going to be a tough pill for many of you to swallow but it's usually the tough pills that are the most transformative and the most liberating. At some point, you're going to have to stop deferring to the least empowered part of you. At some point, you're just going to have to decide that the anxious, nervous, insecure, disempowered part of you doesn't have the answers. That part of you that when you set out to do something new or try something new or face something new, the part of you that says, I don't know how to do it, that part of you is right. And you say to that part, yeah, you don't know how to do it. And that's okay because I know how to do it or I'm in the process of figuring out how to do it. So you're going to have to decide that you're no longer letting that small, scared, disempowered, scarcity mindset part of you tell you who you are. It becomes really, really easy often to listen to the lowest common denominator, to listen to the least effective, least empowered part of us. And that's the part of us that doesn't want us to cross the threshold of the unknown. That's the part of us that doesn't want us to let go of the old formulas and the old ways. That's the part of us that will sacrifice anything and everything to keep you in the comfort zone. I talked about this at the beginning of July in the July um, energy forecast at the first part of the month. The comfort zone does not mean comfortable. I think a lot of humans, when we talk about the comfort zone, they think, oh yeah, five-star hotel, plush mattress, reclining seat with massage feature. No, we're not talking about physical comfort. We're not necessarily talking about what feels good when we're talking about the comfort zone. When I'm talking about the comfort zone, what I'm talking about is the place and the version and the, the version of you and the version of reality that the mind understands, that the mind can predict, that the mind can control. Because here's the thing, the mind doesn't care if you're happy. The mind does not care if you are successful. The mind only cares that you are safe. And the number one thing that the mind sees as safe is what is familiar and what is known. So that's why you're going to have to begin to challenge your notions of smallness. That's why you're going to have to start to turn to the part of yourself that is screaming, I don't know how to do this. And you say, you're right, you don't. But I do, or I'm in the process of figuring out how to do it. So you can sit back, relax, you're off the hook. You don't have to figure it out. You don't have to solve it. You don't have to fix it. That's what I'm in the process of doing. Just because you have been victimized doesn't mean you are a victim. Just because you have been hurt doesn't mean that you are broken. Just because you're afraid doesn't mean that you're a coward. Just because something is hard doesn't mean that you can't do it. Just because something has never been done doesn't mean that it's impossible. It's time for you to stand up to the part of you that wants to see you stuck. It's time for you to acknowledge that there is a part of you who is happy when you are disempowered. There's a part of you that thrives when you are afraid or believe that you are a victim or believe that your trauma is your identity. That is what it's time to stand up to. The darkness exists for one reason, and that reason is to give you a choice. 
We live in a free will reality. So without a choice, there is no way to exercise our free will. So this idea of the polarity between good and bad, light and dark, evil and, you know, and divine is there not as a punishment, not as a threat. It's there to give you a choice so that you can decide. It gives you contrast. It lets you understand this is what the darkness feels like. This is what the illusion feels like. This is what the truth feels like. This is what the light feels like. So the darkness is not there to tell you who you are. The darkness is there to give you a choice so you can decide which version of you you are investing yourself in. What is it that you believe about yourself? yourself to be true? And do those beliefs liberate you or do they imprison you? What identity have you chosen for yourself? And does that identity empower you or does it restrict you? That really is going to be central to every human's experience for the next, I would say, 18 months. It's really crucial now more than ever that you get very, very clear on who it is you believe yourself to be and does that belief serve you anymore? And if it doesn't, then it's time for a new vision. And if the thing that you're trying to do just won't get off the ground and you can't make it stick and you can't make progress, then it's time for a new plan. If you're having difficulty with understanding any of this, that's why I'm here. My job is to remind you of how powerful you are. My job is to remind you what you are capable of. And more than anything, I want to see you achieve it. You can find me at amar.energy. You can follow me here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram at amar.energy. You can find my book, Notes from the Higher Self, available on Amazon. You can book one-on-one -on -one sessions with me. All of these things serve one purpose, and that is to put you back in the driver's seat of your life so that you can create consciously the life that you dream of. Thanks for watching. Have a good month.